I feel like I might be getting adopted. Like, do some people stay on all fours like at a convention like the whole day? Some people just don't have the muscles trained or can't hold it in. Keeping myself from being inserted by other people. Right. That are... Would you be able to show us like a quick tie? Honestly, it's kind of comfy. Yeah. <laughs> I think me and Gabriel should give it a try. I'm not sure I'm ready for the insertable tail. Do it if you want to just wear cat ears or dog ears at home. You can really make it as much a part of your life as you want. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Welcome to another episode of Primary Care. I'm your host, Dr. Hendricks. This episode of Primary Care is sponsored by Rougiette Health. More than just an ED treatment. So thank you so much for coming. Mm -hmm. So now I want to kind of get into some of the items you brought. And oh, could you pull that one over here? Yeah. Let's see. So this was the standard neoprene one. Yeah. A lot of people like this version. They wear it a lot. It's a very common one. Sure. And this one is my own personal one. This one is a nylon-based oh, like one. I like that one. Uh, so it's a lot more breathable, so I can wear it a lot more freely. For sure. So I have a leather hood. Yeah. So you can see that this is all leather. That's uh, so cool. It is open at the top. I like the But this top. one is a scrapyard leather one. Also another version of a leather hood is a leather harness <laughs> sort wow. of head. And you can see that I have the ears colored and everything. So cool. Uh, and it has fun little attachments in case you wanted to be more blinded or restricted from speaking. Wow. <laughs> you can attach yeah. them to them. Can I try it on? Yeah, go for it. Have fun. <laughs> There's lots of straps that you have to tie in. So. I know. I'm just going to kind of like wing it and then you can tell me I did it. Then. Yeah, so just go ahead and slide it on. You'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> it might be a little tight is why. I have a big head. <laughs> Maybe I should unstrap this side. It might be a little easier. I will also describe <laughs> this one, which is this one's a uh, half hood from uh, Mr. Bear, the oh. uh, maker from Montreal. It is very open from the face. Okay, this is where my mate, my face is supposed to go, so I'm gonna do this. Yeah, maybe we'll need your assistance. <laughs> <laughs> Here's some more straps. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's cool. We're twinsies. <laughs> wow. Wow, he has a collar. I feel like a animal. <laughs> All right. Hi, mom. <laughs> you know, that's cool. I like the ears. Okay, and we're back. <laughs> Is it fit right? Yeah, it's fitting just fine. Wow. <laughs> All right. Uh, like I said, those are common pet accessories. Same with uh, collars. Just a plain old collar like that. Yeah. Leather makers might make a nice leather collar that you can clip on. Wow. You can also get a chain collar. There we go. I like that. <laughs> and you can tie it on with an S-clip. Yeah. Uh, locks have some significance, which is a carryover from the leather culture. Right. In the sense that you are owned or that you have some sort of protocol that you are under. So huh. if somebody has a lock on them, you might want to be like, oh, hi, I see they have a lock. Do you have an owner? Do you have a handler? Gotcha. So is you have a lock? Okay? Yes, I do. But the, like I said, this is for myself. Gotcha. Uh, there are self-locking people yeah, such for as sure. myself. Absolutely. And it is like a, hey, just be cautious when approaching. Ask me. Right. But up, right? Oh, that's good. So that's kind of your alert signal there. Yeah. The nose is a learning curve, right? You have to get used to the yeah. nose. <laughs> I've been I, I've been subconsciously avoiding the microphone with my nose. Yeah, because I can see how that becomes an <laughs> issue. And also in taking drinks, if I had a drink, like... Right. I, I tend to just grab right here and just... Yeah, that makes sense. Do you have like a tribe or like a group? Packs, right? Packs, we have right. a pack of gotcha. whatever. I personally don't have a pack. I have my friends. Yeah. Uh, they have their packs. Gotcha. Some people have adopted me into them. They're yeah. like, oh, well, you're just spiritually in our pack right. or whatever. And I'm like, I appreciate it. I love it. It's yeah. a wonderful sentiment. But no, I, I don't have a specific pack. I feel like I might be getting adopted. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really digging the blue as well. That's Very, cool. It's really easy to grab one. I know. Uh, so aside Let's... from that, some pets like to wear some sort of mitts. Wow. So these specifically are bondage mitts, so they're restraining. Uh, they won't let you use your hands, and wow. it gets some people into the headspace a little bit more. Yeah. Here you go. I'll try <clears> one. <throat> wow. Uh, sometimes people like to be on all fours, so they'll end up getting um, boxing gloves uh, because they have nice padding right. on the backs. This looks, yeah, because I can imagine if you put this on and you have another one on, they're not coming off. <laughs> At least not on your own. Let's do it. I like that the buckles are, like, unique. I've never seen, I've never seen a, it like that. That's really cool. Or you can just have some more simple, like, biking Gotcha. Or shorter gloves. Yeah, this is like what I use at the gym. Yeah. <laughs> and there are some fetish gear makers that have 
specific ones that have paws on them in different right. spots or they might have different restraining mitts that have different designs or they have the pads at the knuckles rather than at the fronts because some people decide to be on all fours either on the fronts or on the tops and do uh, some people stay on all fours like at a convention like the whole day yeah someone wow that's a lot of energy <laughs> yeah i guess get used to it well that's also why you mm, let's see where'd i put that there's a lot of uh goodies here oh here we go the knee pads help knee pads yeah these are construction ones i think so you can like strap them on cool Heavy duty. Some critters also like showing off their little beans on their feet too. So oh, you got yeah. little uh like dog foot. Yeah. Different colored socks that have different colored beans. Yeah. I have some on right now, but we're not gonna take off shoes in this. Uh gotcha. no uh free shows of <laughs> I know, feet's extra. <laughs> <laughs> and then I guess I gotta stand up for this. Yeah. Oh the tail. So we also like to wear our tails here or there. <laughs> so cool. And you can have variations of tail, like you mentioned. There's some that are maybe a little bit more sexual or... Yeah, it depends on how you take it. Uh, for this, Definitely. <laughs> uh, <laughs> here is a, an insertable tail. <laughs> depends on how you take it. Depends on how you take it. Right. Uh, this one is actually a size medium, so this is not the smallest one that they have out there. This one's made by Square Peg Toys. Oh, good. Uh, and there's different makers that make different kinds of different colors. Sure. And if you have a hard time keeping it in because some people just don't have the muscles trained or can't hold it in, yeah. uh, there are harnesses to... To hold belt it. things in and hold them in. Yeah. And yes, like I, like you said, it doesn't have to be sexual. Sometimes it's about the, the feeling of it. Having something inside just puts you in that certain headspace. It might not actually make you want to interact sexually, but it might just be like, oh, there's something in there. Right. Like I am keeping myself from being inserted by other people right. that are not my <laughs> owner or my master. Absolutely. Or it might just be the feeling of the tail wiggling around, especially because it goes against the rim. Sure. Absolutely. Uh, ends up feeling very pleasurable for some people. People, so absolutely and then sometimes just look aesthetically like yours is the harness version right now so you just kind of like the way that it looks and yeah the show tail the show tails they usually hang off a of belt some have different clips or you can have different clipping types for them you can wear them with your jocks you can wear them with your belts right. you can wear them with your pants you can wear them with your rubber gear like so many different ways to wear show tails absolutely and I assume this gear starts to get warm after a while or no yeah, it depends Actually, on how you do it this is pretty aerodynamic yeah that's what I was going to say like this one breathes really nicely that one breathes really nicely some of the full coverage ones might get warm uh, yeah. and critters that are very mobile so they might yeah. have like a singlet like this one is a wow. cell block singlet those are cool. selling out fast so you should get sponsored by them that was a great <laughs> <laughs> We were talking about flagging, right? So like wearing ropes or wearing some sort of uh, identifier. So this is a little paw yeah. back pocket hanky. So people can see like, oh, they're a pet player. Yeah. Uh, the color behind it is gray because I'm a bondage person. I'm gotcha. a rope person. So gray means bondage. Yeah. Gotcha. Or you can wear something with like a bone or like some sort of dog. This one's from an area organization by the name of the Boop Society of Central Texas. So. Huh. And then I see there's a book here. Is this kind of a good reference? Yeah. So this is a more recent book that has uh, been brought out by... A pup by the name of Tosa. Uh, pup Play, that hmm. is the name of it. Yeah. Uh, it is not a cheap book, but it is dense. It has a lot of pages, a lot of uh, different research that they've done and pictures hmm. of just what Pup Play is in general, what it has been in different regions, how you can adopt it into your lifestyle. Would you be able to show us like a quick tie? A quick or... tie, yeah, yeah, sure. Hey folks, my podcast, Primary Care, is sponsored by Rougiette Ready, the latest pharmaceutical advancement in erectile dysfunction. This is a sublingual compounded treatment using three ingredients, sildenafil, tadalafil, and apomorphine, and it works up to five times faster than pills and chewables. We give you a promo code, Primary Care, for 20% off your first order and free shipping. Now, let's get back to uh, the content. What, what would be easy to tie? Like my arms, my wrists? Yeah, sure, I can tie your wrists. Let's see, I got a rope here. Cool. See, this is, this is my belt clip. Yeah. <laughs> People talk about rope like it is some sort of ancient lost art it's not <laughs> and uh, it's still happening today yeah and people call like every rope thing shibari and it's not wrong shibari translates to tying in yeah. japanese so gotcha. if people want to talk about like pretty pretty rope art or stuff like that they should refer to it as uh kimbakubi which is more about the art of beautiful 
things. Wow. Uh, just don't appropriate other languages and just call it rope tying. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I just call myself a rigger. I use rope. I'm a rope person. I yeah. don't really like to refer to myself as a person that does shibari. It doesn't feel right. Gotcha. And so did these particular ropes have like a specific name, like the way you tie them or? No, but the way that I tie ropes is generally more Eastern inspired. So okay. like the shibari guides and stuff like gotcha. that. They have more of a focus on wrapping and comfort and deriving all the pleasure or pain in the right ways gotcha. from the rope. Cool. So I'm inspired by that sort of style and uh, I'll start something on you. Okay. Uh, the simplest thing that people start off with, if you just put out your hands like that, is called a single column tie. Single column so tie. easily enough, I will go ahead and put this around your hands. Gotcha. And as you can see here, I'm putting these things together in just like a singular column and that's why we right. call it a single column tie. Gotcha. Uh, so then I'll go ahead and I'll do a loop-de-loop Naughty knot here. Yeah, it is uh, interesting getting, you know, tied. It does put you in a sense of trust and um, vulnerability and definitely can be like a bonding, literally, experience, mm -hmm. I assume. <laughs> and now right here I have tied just a simple loop, and this is called a single column. Huh. Technically, you're already tied up. You can pull on that. It won't <laughs> tighten down. It won't loosen up. Wow. And I can just hold you here as long as I want to. <laughs> yeah, literally. Do you ever, in like events, tie people up and walk them around? Or yeah, that's absolutely a, a thing that thing? happens. You either tie them up, you leave them in this place, you either observe them or you have their partners or somebody that they trust just observe them as they're tied on tables, some sure. mats, or whatever. And of course, it'd be a lot more intricate than this. But if I were to just lead somebody around, sure, I'll just do this. I think a way to make it more complicated or more mm -hmm. tight would be just for me to wrap around the center. Usually, whenever you're doing this, you do it before you tie off the knot at the very end. Mm. And uh, you could call this a two-column tie. Why? Because I have separated this out. So. Yeah. All you riggers out there, don't judge me for what I'm doing. <laughs> Mom, <laughs> don't judge me for what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. That one. So now I have done a two column tie or a double column tie. Honestly, it's kind of comfy. <laughs> yeah. And I can still hold it and it still won't it's tighten down. It's kind of nice like, can... for you to hold it too. I could just like let my hands hang. You could just <laughs> carry me around. See? <laughs> This is the great for a lazy person. <laughs> <laughs> don't give submissives a bad rap. I don't, no, you're right. It's not lazy. Okay, you're right. Being submissive is not lazy. However, if you are lazy, you might want to try it. <laughs> but it is cool. I, I'm actually impressed by how comfortable it is. The mask as well. Um, I'm not a big fan of having anything like tied usually, but not bad i could try this out yeah and of course it's about comfort comfort and trust yeah the people that you're doing this with if you're with an organization you're at a public event and they have all their rules set aside for right. you know consent first uh, don't do anything without people asking right it makes everything much more enjoyable among much more comfortable for sure uh, and like i said before this is just a simple tie this actually is just about the building block to a lot of other ties so from here i can build off and do wow. lots of other more complex ties a lot mm. of complex ties start or continue to use single call or double columns throughout all of their process. So. Gotcha. Wow. I feel like if it were me, if I was trying to go to one of these conventions to explore, I would certainly feel more anonymous and comfortable with a hood on. I think it would be really cool to feel like no one knows who I am, especially if I was getting drug around like this, <laughs> you know, at least for my comfort level initially, because this might be something that I would be interested in. As I had mentioned, it is comfortable, <laughs> but the hood adds a layer of like, I can do anything. No one's going to know it's me. So if you guys see me out there, I'm trying to <laughs> Look out for a blue hood. <laughs> so, yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the blue hood family now, so. <laughs> All right, let me go ahead and release this. Oh, cool. Oh, that is an interesting sensation, having the rope sort of caress, I guess is the right word? Yep. It's interesting. Lee Harrington is one of my favorite authors for rope guides. Gotcha. Uh, they currently live in Denver, I think. They used to live here in Austin. I've gotten to chat with them a little bit. Oh, goodness. Uh, this book. Huh. Shibari. Shibari for everybody, yes. Really interesting. I think me and Gabriel should give it a try. <laughs> <laughs> why not? There's some cool pictures in here, too. Yeah, and one of the reasons why I like Lee Harrington's books, too, is because they use everybody and every body, body shape, type. Yeah. Of every gender, anywhere on the spectrum of everything. Incredible. So books are just fantastic. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, some people, it looks like they're, you know, putting it on over clothes. Some people aren't. So you can just really kind of make it whatever you want it to be. Mm -hmm. And that is the best part of life. Make it whatever you want it to be. Exactly. You know? Well, I am inspired and ready to enter my first maybe kink festival of some sort. You know, <laughs> spread my... 
ears, so to speak? <laughs> and maybe grab a tail. I'm not sure I'm ready for the insertable tail, but I do like the style of the one you're wearing. Yeah, and, and definitely you don't to need to insert anything. You don't need to be right. in anything you don't want to be ever. Ultimately, you know, what I hope most will get from my podcast in general and this particular episode is that life doesn't have to be so serious. You can allow yourself to express yourself in any way that feels good as long as you're not harming other people and that you're respecting other people. There's not a one-size-fit-all for anything, including kinks. If you want to just wear a hood occasionally around your house do it if you want to just wear cat ears or dog ears at home or if you want to go join the community you can really make it as much a part of your life as you want just kind of remembering to not take yourself so seriously and you don't necessarily know what you like until you've tried other things that's what i'm drawing from this and i really appreciate you coming here and being vulnerable to express yourself and in your journey and i'm just like in awe i really want to learn more and i've honestly always found it interesting i saw my first hood when i was in san francisco at Folsom and I just didn't really know how I could incorporate that into my life but now I feel like it's like you mentioned a great way for me to be able to be in maybe social settings that I don't want people to know that I'm there but I still want to have fun and I can have this mask that's also cute and fun and not too scary more so just something fun and, and then meet other people who do the same thing you know and build a community and I like to knowing that this doesn't have to be a sexual thing I can put this mask on and meet other people who are wearing masks and we don't have to make it about that it can just be a sense of comradeship and friendship and finding our commonalities in that space so I'm excited thank you so much for sharing with us yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> cool well thanks again we'll see you guys next time I'm so excited I got to put this on Add us on Instagram at Primary Care Pod. Catch up on past episodes and don't miss out on new ones. Subscribe to the podcast on YouTube, iTunes, and Spotify at Primary Care Pod.